Fantastic. All right, recording. Okay. Oh, wow. Yeah. Good morning, everybody. Thank you all very much for joining us. Um, today we have a very special guest, uh, Kit Collins and also Alex Kessler from Fork Farms. They are um, a business that is reaching all over the states, but they have um, reached into our Northwest Tennessee corner of the world and have provided these beautiful flex farm hydroponic towers to several different school districts. So we wanted to gather with Kit today to kind of pick her brain about all she knows about hydroponics and how these systems work and how they can be integrated into um, agriculture and nutrition education within uh, school districts. Um, so I'm going to pass the mic over to Kit and, and thank you all very much for joining us. All right, thank you so much. Okay, so just so everybody knows, I the screen that I'm looking at right now is just like my presentation. I can't really see any of your faces. So if any questions, comments come up during the presentation, please feel free to just shout them out because otherwise I, I probably am not gonna, not gonna notice that you've got your hand up or anything. So, um, but let's go ahead and get started. So again, thank you everybody for joining us today. Um, my teammate Alex and I are really grateful for the opportunity to tell you all about the Flex Farm and its accompanying resources. Uh, my name is Kit Collins and I'm a partnership development leader at Fork Farms. We are an agricultural technology company based out of Green Bay, Wisconsin. And I personally come from a background in environmental, social, and economic sustainability, and I work to provide access to fresh, high-quality produce and turnkey hands-on learning opportunities to students across the state of Tennessee. So before I jump in and start telling you guys about the Flex, for, Flex Farm um, and everything that we offer, I would like to do just a, a couple really brief introductions. I know we kind of kind of had a couple minutes um, to talk briefly, but if we could just go around the screen really quick and just say what district or organization are you with and what is your specific role at that district, that would just really help Alex and I to kind of understand our audience today. So Alex, if you wanted to start, that would be, that would be awesome. Yeah, of course. Thanks for having me as well. And I'm excited to be on the call to talk about uh, local food in Northwest Tennessee. Um, I've been with Fork Farms since uh, late 2021. It was the best uh, career move choice that I've ever made. And uh, we're really passionate about getting fresh food in the hands of kids and nutrition education in the hands of kids where they are and giving them an opportunity to learn hands-on via hydroponics. Um, I primarily focus in California and farm to school in California and, and FFA programs in California. And uh, my mom was... Uh, a special ed teacher in the in Milwaukee for about 30 years until she recently retired. And so growing up hearing all of her stories about the students, the impact she had on their lives and the resources she had and didn't have access to. Um, it's this the reason why I really love doing this job is to get flex farms into classrooms so teachers can um, use them to engage students in nutrition education and STEM education and just to see the smile on their face when they realize that lettuce is cool. Awesome. Um, Lindsay or Michael, do you want to take it away? Well, I'm Michael Stanford. I'm with the South Carroll Special School District in Carroll County, and I'm also the Ag Ed instructor here at Clarksburg. Fantastic. Thanks for joining us today. All right. I am Lindsay Paul. I am the Farm to School Specialist for the Department of Education. Um, so I help expand farm to school efforts in all 95 counties. So I was interested to come and see what Flex Farm was all about because I have a bunch of schools that are wanting to do hydroponics, so. Fantastic, thanks for joining us, Lindsay. We really appreciate it. And Samantha, we know you, but let's hear it. Oh, you're muted. <laughs> yeah. I am muted. Thank you. I didn't, I don't think I even introduced myself. I'm Samantha Goyret. I'm the executive director of the Northwest Tennessee Local Food Network and also a farm to school coordinator that um, we, uh, my, me and my partner, Caroline Ideas, we uh, help and support school uh, programs, farm to school programs through farm to school uh, coordination. 
So we're consultants, I guess you could say. <laughs> and we have a couple awesome. extra guests who have just joined. Lisa Cyber, I don't know, are you able to just joined if you could unmute. Hi, Lisa. Good morning. Hey, how y'all? I'm Lisa Sieber Garland, um, Trenton Special School District. We do have one of these pork farms. Let's start things. I'm excited to try it. And we're hoping to get a couple more. Um, uh, I think it's going to be wonderful. I'm really excited about it. And hey, everybody, I see a lot of familiar faces. Hey, Lindsay. Hey, Kit. So, and hey. Hi. <laughs> Hi, Lisa. <laughs> and uh, Darlene is connecting to audio, so she'll be with us in, in a moment. Darlene Drummond. Darlene Drummond is um, one of our local farmers um, who is very integrated awesome. into the community. Um, she serves on the Martin Farmers Market Board, um, and she's just an amazing resource and wonderful, wonderful person. We're so glad you joined us, Darlene. Oh, I still see those dots. Yeah, it looks she's like she's having a hard time to... connecting. Um, oh. if, uh, during this presentation, if anyone has any questions, if you could please put those in the comment box and then and then we'll save those questions um, when we have the time and space and I'll help facilitate that. Fantastic. Oh, Darlene, are you connected? Can you hear us? Well, let's hope so. But um, without further delay, if Kit, if you'd like to go ahead and, and get started. Absolutely. So thank you so much for, for bearing with us for those introductions, everybody. Um, just, so, just so you all have an idea of our schedule for today, I am going to start by giving some background about Fork Farms. And then I will tell you about the Flex Farm, the piece of technology that's sitting behind me right now. Um, I'll also talk about all of the educational and technical resources that come alongside the Flex Farm. Then I will some of the partnerships that we've currently got in the state of Tennessee, lots of which are already in the Northwest corner, um, and how those, those specific districts kind of went about looking for funding. Um, and finally, I'll actually stop sharing my screen and step back and walk you through the system um, that's sitting behind me. I'll, I'll tell you about the design of the product, um, some of the requirements, um, a little bit about maintenance uh, responsibilities and, and whatnot. So again, any questions come up? Like Samantha said, please feel free, to, feel free to throw them in the chat and we'll get all of those answered at the end of the session because um, we want to make sure that we're, we're giving you the information that's most valuable to you. So without further ado, let's get going. All right, so Fork Farms is an organization that was founded back in 2017 by our CEO, Alex Tyke, not to be confused with my teammate, Alex Kussler, who was on this call. Um, Alex Tank went to school to be an opera singer and was on contract singing opera in New York City when he had his first experience with, with, with growing fresh food. So during his time out in New York City, he actually volunteered at a rooftop garden that was associated with a food pantry on the first floor of the building. Um, and that's really when his gears started to get turning. And then he thought to himself, you know, why, why can't we? or why aren't we growing fresh food indoors? In a place like New York City, where green space is a rarity and the climate is similar to ours back home here in Wisconsin, uh, there's, there's just very little opportunity to grow fresh food outdoors. So Alex kind of decided to, to, to change up the entire course of his life. He quit singing opera, moved back home to Northeastern Wisconsin um, to his hometown at Appleton where his parents still live. Um, and he moved back in with them and started tinkering around in their basement. Um, and after several years of learning and innovating, he sold his very first flex farm system. And the first flex farm, um, which was called the generation one system was actually made out of stainless steel and plywood. Um, we have come a long way since then. Um, today, we deploy the Generation 4 Flex Farm, which is the one that you see on the screen here. Um, and correct me if I'm wrong, Alex, I believe we've got um, over 2,200 Flex Farms out in the world, um, out in the field being used, um, and over 750 school districts um, that we partner with. Um, 
that, that have those flex farms. So um, I would say that that the majority of, of our partnerships actually do come from the, the K-12 education sector. So this, what you're looking at right here is the flex farm. It's a closed circuit hydroponic system. Um, the flex farm is a major your food producing machine. Oh, and we just got the lights on behind us. Is that distracting? Should I unplug them? No, it's fine. Okay. Sometimes they can be really bright on the screen. So I just want to make sure I'm not blinding anybody. Um, okay. So the Flex Farm is a major food producing machine. It each unit takes up about nine to 10 square feet of floor space. So I like to tell people that it's roughly the size of a residential refrigerator. Um, and it does have have the capacity to produce 20 to 25 pounds of edible portion leaky greens every month. Um, the system is incredibly easy to operate and maintain. Um, I actually have a system at my house. I typically spend anywhere between, between 10 to 30 minutes with my farm every week. Um, some of your maintenance duties, and I actually will, I'll detail this a little bit. Um, I'll, I'll give a little bit more detail about this when I'm actually standing by the flex farm in a little bit here, but some of the maintenance duties um, include periodically adding water to your tanks, checking your nutrient and pH levels of the water in the tanks, and harvesting the system at the end of the month. Um, we also do ask all of our partners to do a deep clean of the system, typically every three to four months or three to four harvests, depending on the quality of water in your specific area. Um, but this, again, is a pretty easy process because each of the growing panels, um, so the, the growing panels are one foot by one foot square plastic panels, um, are dishwasher safe. So they can actually be sent right through uh, your commercial dishwasher at school, and they make the, the cleaning process really fast and really easy. Plus, luckily, all of these duties that I just mentioned can be performed by students. And we find that when students are engaged in the process of growing their own food, they, number one, take ownership over the experience. Number two, demonstrate a positive perception of that fresh food. And number three, and arguably most importantly, they are more likely to actually eat said fresh food, which is huge. Um, so implementing a flex, farm a flex farm program in your district um, or, or with your organization has the potential to be a significant value add and give different departments within your district the opportunity to, it, to collaborate with one another in ways that, that may not have been previously thought about or possible. Um, so Next, the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm actually going to switch tabs. I'm going to show you our Farmative Growers community. So I'm going to do that right now. And if somebody could just shout out, can you see that I switched here? Yes. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. So this, what we're looking at right now, this is kind of getting into the into the heart of the heart of the resources that come alongside the Flex Farm. So, in addition to the physical technology being the system, we provide all of our partners with access to this online platform called Farmative. And Farmative is broken up into a few different categories, as we can see along the side here. We've got our growers community, our grow center, our education hub. We also do have um, your your my account and your store pages. I'm not going to spend too much time on these today just for sake of time, um, but at your, on your my account page that is where um, you can upload your tax exempt form if you're a 501c3. Um, that's also where you can invite more growers to the Farmative platform. So let's say you're a food service director like Lisa, you're a food service director, but you want to give um, a handful of teachers access to the Farmative platform so that they can come online and download the curriculum and post pictures and whatnot. Um, Lisa has the capability to hop online, type in everybody's first and last name and email addresses that she wants to be on the platform and send out those invites. The store, that is where our partners can come on and purchase more individual supplies as needed. So we're talking like seed bundles, rock wool, um, nutrients, if they want to buy a couple t-shirts that say fork farms on them, just things like that. So not much more to say there. I do want to highlight our community growth center and education hub, however. So 
Um, buh, 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 buh. So up here at the top, this is the growers community. This, um, I kind of, I, the way that I like to describe this to people is it's it's kind of like a private Facebook wall specifically for Flex Farm partners. So anybody who has a Flex Farm or operates a Flex Farm can come online here, post pictures about what they're doing, ask each other questions and collaborate with like organizations um, from around the country and world that may not, you, you probably wouldn't have had, had that relationship with um, otherwise. So I'll just scroll down a little bit here so you can kind of get a feel for some of the things that, that are being posted. We've, we do have it split up into, into some different categories. So we have a questions section um, of sharing your knowledge. So let's say, uh, somebody is is wanting to know has anybody had any luck you know um, growing strawberries in the flex farm or, or does anybody have any tips on growing cucumbers in the flex farm um, this is a great place for that um, and then our harvest celebrations this is just this is my favorite one because we got lots of lots of cute pictures in this in this in this section so um, here we've got an elementary school that's hosting a summer school program um, in South Texas um, they are growing um, some brassicas right now actually they're about to harvest they're about to harvest those next in less than a week um, here we've got some cucumbers peppers and tomatoes. Um, this is a partner of ours, a food pantry based out in Connecticut um, that is harvesting 200, 200 pounds of, of greens a month from their, from their 15 flex farms for their food pantry. Um, so just, just fun pictures and a, a place where, where all of our partners can come online and collaborate. Now, if we move down here to the Grow Center, so this is, this is where um, our growing resources live. And our growing resources are split up into both um, video and literary formats, and they detail every step of the growing process from actually unboxing the system. So let's just start, let's just go right here. So from actually unboxing the system when it arrives on your doorstep, all the way down to harvesting the flex farm at the end of the crop cycle, and then doing some maintenance at the end of your crop cycle, doing some cleaning and maintenance. Um, also, in, also in this grow center, we have just a few months ago, I think a couple, three, four months ago now, we released this flex farming 101 course. So this is actually an hour long course that we recommend all of our new flex farm partners walk through before they start growing in the system. Um, and since I actually have the capability to give everybody on the call today trial user access to Farmative, um, what you can do if you're interested is come online and walk through this Flex Farming 101 course. It takes, you can stop and start. As you can see, I've made it through seven of the 11 lessons. Um, you can stop and start. It takes about an hour total, um, but you can you can come online here and kind of test your knowledge. See if you've got what it takes to be, to be a hydroponic farmer, um, which was supposed to be funny because our whole motto is anyone can be a farmer. It's very, very easy to grow in the flex farm. Anyways, so if you're interested, I'll give you some trial user access to Farmative. You can come online and take this Flex Farming 101 course. Okay, so down here at the bottom, this probably is, it might be what is most intriguing um, to some of the to some of the folks on the call today. This is our education hub. So again, all of our partners get access to this, all of these educational resources. So up at the top here, we've got our K through 12 curriculum package. I'll just pop into, I'll pop into six through eight for now. So as you can see, we've got the curriculum broken up into four different bandwidths. Each of the, each of the bandwidths has 11 different lessons um, tailored specifically to the age levels um, for these grades. Um, they are, the curriculum is aligned to the next generation science standards um, and is, is really comprehensive. So it's not all about growing, it, growing food in the flex farm. Um, we've also got lessons on composting on sustainability on food packaging um on you know how to feed a world that's that's about to have 10 billion people living in it um so really comprehensive we also have this badging program um, and activities package i would say that these two things are typically a little more popular in the after school space um so after school programming like your leaps programs um or your 21st um, cclc or um, ymc 
SBAs, boys and girls clubs, things like this. But some of our some of our classroom educators do do like to use the um, activities package in the badging program in class as well. Also, last thing I'm going to say about formative, uh, we did actually just just this Tuesday, just two days ago, release this food justice toolkit. Um, this is a bit more heavy hitting. Um, the purpose uh, of the tool of the food food justice toolkit is to foster learning, exploration, and a deeper understanding of the complexities surrounding food apartheid and the importance of advocacy and activism. So. This is, it's, it's heavier. It's definitely heavier than some of our other lessons um, that we've got in, in the education hub, but as, as an organization um, that, that, that is all about fresh food, we have, we feel we have a huge responsibility to talk, to talk about these things things and talk about food justice and, and, and food insecurity and everything. So um, this is also available on our formative platform. So before I'm, I'm going to fly back over here to the call before I, before I switch back to the presentation, does anybody have any questions, any, anything I want, anything they want me to highlight on the formative platform uh, before we move back? Okie dokie. Fantastic. Then let me bear with me. I'm going to share this tab instead. Please note, if you do have a question, everyone is on mute, so you'll have to unmute yourselves, or you could use the chat box to put the question in. Thank you, Samantha. <laughs> Good call out. Okay, so ne the, this next slide that I am about to show you um, right here, this is actually, um, uh, I think, almost a complete list of all the different parts K-12 partnerships that we currently have in the state of Tennessee. Um, and it is actually really fitting that Samantha, Caroline, and I crossed paths um, a few months back because Fork Farms' presence in, in Tennessee actually started in Weekly County. Um, so we, uh, we being myself and a couple of, of my teammates at Fork Farms, we met um, the FFA advisor for um, Dresden High School. His name is, I'm sure many of you know him, John Holden. Um, he uh, was at the na 2021 National FFA Convention in Indianapolis. And we, we, we ran into him there and he was really excited about the Flex Farm. And um, he was the first person to get a Flex Farm for his classroom um, in the entire state of Tennessee. And and since then, we've kind of just been slowly but surely spreading out from the northwest corner. Um, so I'm sure that I'm, I'm sure that as you look at this list, many of you have connections to or are um, associated with these districts. For example, Lisa, she's with Trenton Special School District. Um, she's got the Flex Farm in her food service department. Um, but you can see here, uh, we've we've got Flex Farms in lots of different settings. So it's a very versatile piece of equipment, and I think that's that's the main thing that I want to highlight on this slide, um, is that the Flex Farm can be used in a lot of different applications. Um, I think the most natural the most natural setting, um, just off the top of your head when you think about it, could be your CTE um, ag FFA type setting because it just just very naturally fits in. Um, but we've got Flex Farms in in every department across districts um, throughout the United States. Uh, we've got flex farms in after school pro programs, special education classrooms, in fourth and fifth grade social studies classrooms. Um, this picture that you're looking at on the screen, this is actually of um, a seventh grade science classroom at Christiana Middle School in Rutherford County. Um, we've got them in, in food service departments. So the long and short of it is that the Flex Farm, again, is a really versatile tool, um, a versatile learning tool uh, that can be put in a lot of different places within school districts. So um, now I am, I, I would like to give, I would like to give my teammate Alex the floor for a couple minutes here. Since we're talking about existing partnerships, as he mentioned in his introduction, he has stewarded a lot of relationships and a lot of amazing partnerships with school districts in California. Um, and I, I just wanted to give him the opportunity to, to talk for, for a couple minutes about maybe one or two of his, one or two of his favorite partnerships. So 
Alex, do you want to, um, do you want to speak? I do. Thank you. I love this picture. Um, that's Emily Fish, I believe, at uh, Christiana Middle School, who is running a great program. And uh, I think it kind of speaks to um, the support that Kit and I are also able to, pro to provide. Um, Emily does a great job, like I said, um, probably back in August of last year. She um, was noticing that the water flow wasn't flowing correctly, and she asked if uh, if I could help out. And I'm no I'm no expert, but I am getting better uh, by the day. But we hopped out of a Zoom call after about 15 minutes of her reaching out, and we're able to help her um, with a part of the pump, the filter bag, to be cleaned out. And um, once we went through that troubleshooting, it was working great. The water was flowing great, and she was back in action. She was really grateful for the quick help. So. We're here to help whenever folks need it and so, so that Emily can continue growing and so kids can continue learning. Um, California is great and beyond um, because the beauty, like kids said, is in the diversity of how the flex farm can be used. Uh, it's it, very corny, I know, but I like to think that kind of the, the magic of the universe starts with the seed. And I think that kids sort of innately get that. So it's really up to schools on how they want to deploy it. Here are my, some of my favorite examples in California. Um, schools will start like a hydroponics club. So you can kind of go that deep and be specifically focused on building like a hydroponics club. Some other really cool examples are uh, as part of an after school program, we've got kindergartners growing radishes in California, which is really speaks to the ease of use of the flex farm. The kindergartners are running the program from start to finish. I like the collaboration projects like Kit mentioned. So like when um, We've got a flex farm in a science classroom and they're able to engage with the food services department, like either growing the produce and then donating it to the food service uh, department for the salad bar, or even doing something as creative as like selling the food back to food services um, to teach the kids a little bit about the cost of food, entrepreneurship, and kind of make it a win-win. Service learning, we're really big on service learning too. So like schools will have kids grow produce in the classroom and then reach out to local food pantries, for example, um, to donate the produce or folks from local food banks and food pantries can come into the school to pick up the produce, um, like is happening in Riverside Unified. And then that representative from the food bank actually will stick around for a little bit and will give a speech to the kids about the importance of, I mean, honestly, just like the importance of it being okay to ask for help and what a food bank does to serve the community and kind of like a field trip without having to put kids on a bus and take them to a food bank for a field trip. So it's a major win-win. My favorite, I mentioned in the beginning, my mom was a special ed teacher. My favorite story, I can put the YouTube link in the chat, very short uh, 90 second YouTube video, is uh, a food service director at a big district in California purchased a flex farm. And he decided to place it in a special ed classroom at Jackson Elementary School in La Quinta, California. The teacher there, her name is Anala. Um, she does K through two special needs and um, the kids are able to operate the system and the beauty is in the, in the details and the, the experience. Uh, she tells me that every Monday the kids line up at the door to see how much the flex farm has grown over the weekend. And what's great is that the word's gotten out amongst the other kids in the schools. So not only are her kids the first ones in line to show off what they've done, but the other kids from other classrooms know that the flex farm is there. They pass it in the hallway. They see the light. The entire school lines up on Mondays to see how much the flex farm has grown. Um, and that's really what it's all about more than anything. And um, just sort of that presence the flex farm has in the classroom. <clears throat> Anala tells me it's very soothing for those students. A lot of the students in her class are nonverbal and were nonverbal at the beginning of the school year. Um, and after engaging with the flex farm and having like the the sound of the water in the background and of the of the pump and everything, um, it's become sort of like their friend, and that is really special to me. So hopefully, from what I've said, uh, some ideas are flowing on what this can do because there are a lot. And you guys all being, I'm sure, excellent educators, the power is in you to decide how to use this, and I'm sure you'll do a great job, just like I'm sure Lisa's going to do at a uh, Trenton Special School District. Alex, I have a Thank question you, for you. Alex. Sure. So <clears throat> there are multiple pathways to integrate these systems into the classroom. Could you speak about how they have been integrated through the STEM or STEAM um, activities and curriculum that's becoming more and more embedded into schools? 
Yeah, for sure. Um, the, the main feedback I get about the flex farm, when I'm presenting like kit is doing is that, you know, the technology is the technology, right? Like you can see how much it can grow. So I think where people are really like get the wheels turning is when we share the curriculum with them, uh, how it's banded by grade level K through two, three through five, six through eight, nine through 12, and how the curriculum is, uh, NGSS aligned next generation science standards. So they feel confident that it can be part of like a, a, a STEM program, part of like a science program in their school district. Um, so what they'll do is they'll have this be like a, a piece of what they offer in the classroom as part of like their STEM programming, right? In addition to other great um, like experimental math and science programming, they're using the Flex Farm um, to have the kids do a lot of experimentation, like um, why does basil grow differently than lettuce? You know, what different nutrients do they need? Um, what, uh, what's the difference between, uh, romaine lettuce and spinach and all the different experimenting that you can do there. Um, so the curriculum, um, really is like the backbone of that, to have that lesson planning already done for folks, um, to know that like they have that support and they don't need to reinvent the wheel and it just driving conversation and driving activities around science topics. So we've got videos on Farmative that help sort of explain like the science of how everything works. So you can really go deep on like the inner workings of it and how it relates to STEM. Thank you. Awesome. Alex, if you have the chance, um, could you put Anala's short video in the chat? I think that it is a really great video and it, I think everybody might be, might just like looking at it on their own time. Absolutely. Thank you. Okay, so um, really quick, we're 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 creeping up on on an hour here already. So I, I wanna I wanna make sure that I have the chance to show you the flex farm behind me and kind of go through the de design and everything. Um, but before we do that, really briefly, I just want to talk about. Oh, that's another fun video. I'll set. We'll send this to everyone. This is a ten minute video. Not gonna play it right now. Um, everybody's favorite topic though funding so whenever i whenever i have meetings with 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 educators food service directors after school program directors um they're usually their biggest question is this is really cool i can see this fitting into my classroom my program my my project that i'm working on how am i going to pay for it so there's there's a lot there's a lot of different ways that we can go, uh, but specifically for the state of Tennessee, um, I, I, as as you all know, there is a lot of CTE funding right now, um, and and I think we'll see kind of over the next the next few months and up with the upcoming 23 24 school year those funds really starting to drop um, lots of CTE funding so if your district is one that has a CTE program that could be a really good route to go same thing with your ISM grants the innovative school model grants um, this does not apply to every district across the state but um, I, I do have a couple a couple districts that I'm I'm working with currently right now that weren't on that list um, that are that are hoping to use some of their ISM funding to get several flex farms. Um, so that's another route that we can look at. Um, last thing, the flex farm as far as as far as funding within your specific districts. The flex farm actually is an allowable expense um, for is, is an allowable food service food service expense through the USDA. Um, and, you know, this may not work for every district, depending on, on financials and everything and budgeting and, and whatnot and bidding and the whole nine yards. Um, but we do have, especially in the state of Wisconsin, a lot of partners um, who have who have gone the route, the, the food service route of, of actually acquiring flex farms, um, because it is an allowable expense um, through the USDA. Now, if we're looking outside of your individual school districts, what I always tell my partners is to start small. Um, we've got th there's there's always federal grants that are open um, that that could apply for for a hydroponics, indoor ag, innovative ag type programming. Those applications are really really long, typically pretty tedious. Um, the applicant pool is 
really big and it takes a long time for those funding cycles um, to turn over. So I always tell my partners to start small look at look within your individual communities so if your district has a pre-existing relationship with um, community foundations or individual donors that is a really good place to look as well as like regional and statewide grants um, so specifically we, we've I mean we've already talked about there's a lot of funding in in, in Tennessee currently for CTE programs um, the innovative school model grants are dropping all over the place. Same thing with the, the 21st century CCLC grants. Um, those should be coming out pretty soon here for the state of Tennessee. So there are a lot of options, but I always tell my partners to start, to start local if at all possible, um, because that typically is more effective um, than starting at the, at the federal level with the big USDA farm to school grants and, and things like that. So anybody have any questions there? One okay, question, okay. Kit. Do you oh. offer bundle packages? Do we offer bundle packages? That's a good, What? say more. What do you mean by that? Like, say a school district would like to buy five of these. Is there like a, a discount in bulk? Great question. Great question. So I actually um, talked to, um, talk to my teammate, Alex, here that's on the call. Fun fact, this is a, this is a picture from... The Northwest Tennessee Local Food Network Facebook page of the Westview High School Flex Farm in Weekly County, in case anybody was wondering. But anyways, we are going to be offering a promotion. Kind of, Lisa was on the on the Volco call that we did um, several weeks ago. Kind of the same thing as the Volco call that we did, Lisa. If anybody on this call is interested in purchasing a flex farm for their upcoming um, school year or their summer school programs, whatever the case may be, we will give you an entire year's worth of growing supplies for free. Um, now, if we if we were starting to, if, if, if there was any interest in like bulk purchasing flex farms, so I would say Alex, maybe like 10, 15 plus, then we would definitely start to look at look at some bulk discounting. Um, but for now, if, if anybody is interested in, oh, we'd like to, we, this is cool, but we want to start small, sounds great. We'll give you a free year's worth of growing supplies. And if anybody is interested in, in doing that, they can contact me um, or my teammate, Alex, um, and, and we'll get you all of we'll get you all our contact information um, after the call. So you don't need to worry about that now. But um, does that sound good to everybody? Does anybody have any questions about that? Oh, I, let me take a look at the chats. And this also includes access to the formative portal where you have all the curriculum, you have videos. Um, and um, yep. if, if I may request, because we didn't really look, we looked a little bit into the curriculum, but if you could yeah. show our guests how to access those videos because those videos are really great. The little short videos. Um, oh, oh, absolutely. That absolutely. share like yep. techni technical issues like how much uh, fertilizer do you need to put into the system and and that kind of that kind of stuff. You bet. So those specific resources, um, th those those videos are going to be found in the Grow Center. So our growing videos, these are. So let me just let me just click on this one as an example. Um, so this is this is the the other Alex. This is our this is our CEO Alex. They kind of look similar, which is interesting. Um, but this is the video. This is a two to three minute video on on adding nutrients. Those can all be found here in the growing videos section. We also do have these grow science videos um, that are a bit more educational. Um, the, the, the growing videos are, are kind of more technical, if you will. Um, and the grow science videos, I would say these would be really good ones to play like in class, actually. Um, so does that, does that answer your question, Samantha? Yeah. Yes, and, and I'm just thinking, okay. you know, from, from the novice person who has had absolutely no experience or knowledge of hydroponic systems ever. So if they have yep. a question, they could go to these videos and find the answer or, of course, contact contact y'all. But um, it's nice absolutely. to have this resource available at all times. <laughs> absolutely. You, you got it. Um, and I think that 
I, I do want to highlight the Flex Farming 101 course one more time. Um, this is this is a really valuable uh, kind of like lesson package for for adults, if you will. Um, so for the novice hydroponicist that has never has never done any hydroponics before, this is brand new to them. Uh, um, this Flex Farming 101 course is the perfect place to start. Um, and I would personally recommend that all of our new partners and anybody who's even interested in just like digging into the Flex Farm a little bit more, um, you go on, you you log into your trial user access here and take the Flex Farming 101 course because it, it's it's really useful. Thank awesome. You. Okay, so you betcha. So if anybody has any, if, if there's no, if there's no other questions about the presentation thus far, then I'm going to quit sharing my screen um, and I'm going to back up so you guys can see the flex farm. I'm going to run through the design and everything. Um, so one more time before I, before I stop sharing my screen, we all good. Any questions? Um, I just have one comment from a participant who was not able to attend and that's uh, David Hawkrider who was the F, one of the FFA oh. ag teachers at yeah. Westview from that picture. Yeah. Um, he said that, you know, if you plant the full flex farm, you're going to have a lot of salad greens. So the best way to yes. do it is to stagger the planting. That way, say, if you're mm -hmm. just using your flex farm for just one school, you'll have uh, a greater time span to be able to offer the fresh hydroponic greens into the school cafeteria without being overwhelmed with a lot of greens all at once. Okay, it, that's that's really interesting. Um, for, I, I would say that for smaller schools, like probably like a hundred students or less, I, I would recommend the the stagger planting situation that, that, that David mentioned. Um, I, I should touch base with him though and tell him, um, just clarify with him that the, the flex farm, once you harvest the greens out of the flex farm, you can throw them in the refrigerator for three, four, five weeks and they stay fresh um, because they're, they're, not, they're not traveling 1,500 miles from Salinas Valley, California. They're traveling feet from the FFA classroom to the individual, like the satellite kitchen at Westview High School. Um, so yes, you absolutely can stack your plant, um, but uh, the greens will stay good for a really long time if you do choose to, to plant out the entire system at once. Excellent. That's good to know. Thank you. Awesome. Okay, so let's see if I stop sharing. Um, I'm going to change up my view here. Okay. So we can okay. see you full screen. You can see me full screen now? Yes. Fantastic. Okay, so I'm going to back up my laptop just a little bit. And I'm going to grab my TDS meter, and pH indicator test, move this chair out of the way. Okay, so can everybody see the flex farm? Yes. Awesome. And it just like barely fits in the screen, but I'm actually going to start at the bottom and work my way up to talk about the design of it really quickly. So I'll, I'll tilt my screen back up, but okay. So starting at the bottom of the flex farm, um, you could kind of see from the picture on the slideshow that I was telling that I was showing you earlier, the system actually sits on casters. So it's a mobile system. Um, so you can, it opens and closes around this light tower that sits in the middle. So on top of the casters sits the tanks. This is where the water lives. The tanks are actually connected in the back by some tubing that allows the water to flow continually between the two tanks. Um, there's one pump. It sits in the left-hand tank of the system, and that pump essentially pumps the water up to the top of the system, distributes the water throughout two different drip lines um, with holes that align to each of the planting spaces and then the water falls back down into the tanks and the whole process starts all over again. So 
The pump is going to be staying on about, uh, the pump stays on 24 seven. So you're always gonna have your pump plugged into the wall. The light tower, this light tower sitting in the middle here, it's on a timer as you guys can tell because it turned on halfway through halfway through the presentation. Um, but the time, the light will be on a timer. The light can be on about 16 to 18 hours a day depending on what you're growing. Um, and we, we provide you a light timer. So once you set the light timer, you can just forget about it. Um, so that's, that's kind of the basic design of this system. Um, at, when, when your system is in, when your system is in grow mode, AKA when the light is on, that is when we recommend that you have it closed around the light tower. That will ensure that you're not wasting any of that light energy. Um, and that your plants are, are, are absorbing all of the, all of the light that they need to grow the most efficiently and effectively. Um, but when your light tower is not on for those six to eight hours a day, um, you can absolutely have it open like this. And so one of the things that I think a lot of our educational partners do is they actually set their light timers to turn on at the end of every school day and then turn off again at the start of the following school day um, so that they can have their system thrown wide um, during the day. All of, their, all of the students can come up and really see all the growth that's been happening. Um, and then at the end of the day, the light tower turns on, close up the system and let it grow for the night. Any questions about that so far? Awesome. So I already briefly talked about um, some of the requirements of the system. Like I said, it takes up about nine to 10 square feet of space, 10 square feet of space when it's open like this, nine square feet of space when it's closed around the light tower. Um, it stands at about five and a half feet tall. Um, and really the only, the only big requirements that you need to be able to grow in the flex farm are two wall outlets, just your regular 110 volt outlets. Um, again, one for the light tower, one for the pump. You need to be in a temperature, cons a temperature controlled indoor space. And this is really important. Lots of times I get, I, I get um, teachers, greenhouse instructors who are like, can we, we have some hydrop hydroponic equipment already in our greenhouses. Can we put it in there? The answer, the the, the, the easy answer is you can. Um, the, the not so easy answer is we don't recommend that you do that. Number one, typically it gets to be just a little too warm for the stuff that we're growing in the, lead, growing in the flex farm um, um, to, to, to thrive in those greenhouse temperatures. Um, and number two, there's just much higher likelihood that you're going to experience pests. Um, your aphids, your powdery mildew, um, any, anything that you would normally see on like greenhouse tomatoes or anything like that while you're growing in a greenhouse, it's, it's likely going to transfer the plants in the flex farm. So we do not recommend that you put your flex farm in a greenhouse. It should be kept in a temperature controlled indoor space somewhere between 60, 60, 65 to 75 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, does that sound good to everybody? Makes sense. So how, how do you deal with pest control? What if pests get in into your system inside? Really good question. Um, truthfully, so I've, I, I have been with the company for, for over two years now. And in, in my whole time of being here, I think I've had, I've, I think I've had two, two or three calls about, about pests um, in their flex farms. And, and, and two of, at least two of those, two of those three calls were because, were because um, the, the teachers or in, in one of their cases, individual homeowners um, actually put their system outside for a brief period of time. Um, so one of, the, one of the schools um, was in Minnesota. They were having an open house near the end of the school year um, uh, the, for like a greenhouse plant sale and, and everything. They wanted to show off the flex farm. So they, they put it, um, they put it by the auto shop, which the auto shop's doors were thrown wide. Um, and so some pests got into the system, um, pests being aphids in this case. Uh, same thing with the homeowner actually in California. She wanted to put her system on her deck um, for the summer months and 
it, there was just there was there was no dissuading her from doing that and and she she got the pest so i think i think what what i have what i would recommend in in those cases if you do experience um experience pests would be uh to most of the time you're going to have to pull pull the plants that are in the system um and that's it's a bummer um but to make sure that you're that you're really getting every getting all the aphids out and everything, probably at the end of the day, the easiest way to get rid of them is to pull all the plants and clean and deep clean the system. Um, you can try you can try leaving the plants in the system and individually looking over everything and uh, wiping everything down with with neem oil, um, but that it's pretty tedious. And if you miss if you miss an aphid, it's the whole process is going to start all over again. So, well, and what I've heard is that it's pretty easy to clean the system. Um, it is. It is very easy to clean the system. There's a drain valve on the back, so if you're if you're located, you know, especially in a in a food service setting with where there's lots of floor drains, or we we've got partners that have have their flexums in old like welding stalls um in weld in old welding labs that they kind of just like redid and that's where the the flex farms lives now there's there's floor drains all over that room so um i also in the past especially if i'm at a conference what i do is i actually let the pump pump the water out for me i disconnect the vertical irrigation line put it into a, a five gallon bucket and just let the pump pump all the water out. Once you get the water out, it's super easy. You just pull the plants, um, send all the panels through the dishwasher and um, you're on your way. Speaking of which, I would like to show you guys what an individual panel looks like. So give me a second. I'm gonna unplug the system so that I don't spray water all over the place. Okay, and while kids doing that, Alex, what's the best way to contact y'all? I will put um, Kit and my phone number and email address in the chat okay. shortly. And I think Kit will probably follow up with everybody um, who attended today with a, with an email as well. Okay. For those who were not able to attend but are watching this video, could they just visit um, Fort Farms website and be able to find you that way? Yeah, that will Absolutely. definitely that will definitely work. And um, I think just to put a and I want Kit to talk a little bit about this, but. Uh, it's a great question about the pests. I think uh, to summarize her answer, it really hinges on your environment. If you're in a pest-free environment indoors, then you're going to be able to avoid any pests. But it does happen. And one of the things in California that's really cool is they have those outdoor schools, which was like blew my mind when I saw it. Like there's schools outside and it's an open environment. So more likely there with those partners that have had it, we've worked through some things with them. Like you can put down some mosquito bits, which are helpful. You can put a little bit of hydrogen peroxide in the tank. So we're here to help troubleshoot those kind of things. So Kit, as you're showing that panel, um, I'd like you to also talk about, if you can, uh, all the different variety of what's being grown in the system behind you, because there's a lot of different Ooh. being grown in there. And I think people usually want to hear what's possible. Yeah, I'm actually, to do that, I'm going to actually bring my computer over to the system so everybody can see. This is really quick. This is what the individual panels look like. So they're just square panels, one foot by one foot. And this one specifically, I think we've got some this is Genevieve's basil growing in here. Um, and you can see the roots growing down on the back there. Um, but these are dishwasher safe. So they're about the size of like dinner plates. You can just throw them in the dishwasher um, one cycle and you're good to go. As soon as you, you clean that and, and you, to be clear, you only need to do that every three to four months, once every three to four months. Um, so this is not like an after every harvest type of thing. This is a, a quarterly type of thing. So. I'm gonna put this back, then I'll pick up my. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Samantha. Sorry, just the plugs that you're using. Is that Coco Core? It's Rockwell, actually. So Rockwell. we use okay. we use the Rockwell. It's a, it's spun basaltic rock that's melted down at a really high heat, like 1600 degrees Celsius, and then and then spun into a fibrous mat that holds water really well. So that's what we use. Um, that's just what we have found works best, specifically in the Flex Farm. Great question. Uh, okay, and then they so just slide no back soil. in. There's absolutely no soil involved in this whatsoever. Correct. No soil. Okay, bear with me for a second. I'm going to plug the system back in. And then I'm going to show you what's growing. Okay, 
So in this flex farm, up here at the top, oh, whoa, wrong way. Okay, up here at the top, we've got some basil um, all along the top. And then on this side of the system, it looks like this is entirely lettuce. So we've got romaine um, here close to the side. Oh, just kidding, I lied. There's some kale in the middle there. Looks like we've got some, it doesn't look like red oak, but oh, that looks like, that looks like some Cherokee lettuce, um, some, some magenta Cherokee maybe, and some green star. So lots of leafy greens on this side. And then over here, we have lots of different brassicas. So we've got um, this, this huge bok choy over here in the middle. Um, we got, so we, we've got some more kale, some baby, some little baby Cherokee lettuce over here. And again, a little bit more basil on the top. And I think hidden back in there, we've got some tatsoi as well. Um, but the bok choy, the bok choy just grows, grows so fast, so big, so fast. And it, <laughs> it kind of chokes out some other plants if you're not careful. Um, so lots of, lots of leafy greens in this system right now. And to be frank, guys, the Flex Farm was designed and optimized to grow those leafy greens and culinary herbs. So that's what, that's what it's going to do best. Um, and that's what it's going to do fastest and the most of. But it is also possible to grow other crops, like fruiting and flowering crops, like cherry tomatoes, cucumbers, strawberries, peppers. Um, we've got partners that are growing those things all the time. They just take a little bit more time and expertise to to bring to full harvest. Um, so I always recommend to my partners to start with the easy stuff, start with the with the leafy greens, your lettuces, kale, spinach, bok choy, um, and ugh, any culinary herb under the sun you can grow. I've grown like 15 to 20 different culinary herbs in my flex farm at once. Um, so dill, cilantro, parsley, chamomile, lavender, sage, rosemary, thyme, the entire Simon and Garfunkel song, um, <laughs> the whole nine yards. So, <laughs> oh, look how Excellent. slick that is, Alex. Thank you. Great, so, so okay. there is a way to connect with Kit and Alex right there on your screen. Take a screenshot of that. And um, I just and I will, I, 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 Samantha, you have you have like the email addresses from everybody on the call through Eventbrite, right? Yes, I. Um, if that's okay with all the participants, I will share that with you. That way, you can follow. That up. would be that would be fantastic because then I'll just follow up with the I'll I'll send them a copy of the presentation that we went over, um, and some other resources for to, for them to look like for them to look at, um, like maybe a curriculum overview or spec sheet, things like that. Sure, excellent. Um, and I just wanted to chime in. So part of what the Northwest Tennessee Local Food Network does is our mission is to serve as a catalyst for a thriving and equitable local food system that's accessible to all in our region. Um, one of the projects that we do um, now kind of on a biannual basis is um, produce a local food guide magazine. And our next magazine is going to come out next year, but we would like to feature the schools that are using um, these systems and just showcase your pictures kind of through a picture, like a story picture in a sense. Um, so once you do get your flex farms up and running, please take some pictures um, and share them with us because we would love to feature your schools um, in our upcoming Northwest Tennessee Local Food Guide. Amazing. We also at Fork Farms, like we repost most of the stuff that comes up on social media too. So. If any of your schools have any any press or anything or, or your nutrition departments post a picture of salads that you made with the Flex Farm lettuce, like make sure to tag us so we can repost it. Awesome. Well, if 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 we're all good, if nobody has any other questions, I know we, we were over time. I don't want to take up any more of your time, um, but you can contact myself. You can contact my teammate, Alex. Um, thank you all so much for joining us today. We really appreciate the opportunity to, to get in front of all of you and chat with you. So um, I hope you have a, a wonderful rest of your day and week and have a, a nice sunny weekend. And um, 
don't be a stranger. Reach out to us and, and we'll talk to you all soon. Thank you, Kit and Alex, for joining us this morning all the way from Wisconsin. We appreciate y'all so much. Thank you. Thanks Bye, everybody. Thanks for facilitating all your great work. We appreciate it. I'll talk to you soon, Samantha. All right.